everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Infinifactory. Infinifactory is the new game. It's in early access, but I'll talk about that a little bit more later. This is not your traditional, you know, barren featured early access game. But anyway, this is Infinifactory from Zachtronics Game. Recently came out on Steam within the past week while I was away. And one of the games where, uh, well, I was looking at new releases while I was away because I'm addicted to my job and I love the games industry and, you know, spent like 30% of my time reading news on Twitter anyway. Um, it's one of the games where I was like, man, I really wish I was home so I could be playing this. Well, not like that. I was having a great time on my vacation. But if I were home, I would be playing it is what I was trying to say, I guess. Let me turn the master volume down just a little bit here. Maybe a little bit too loud, causing me to shout. It's from Zachtronic Games. You may remember Zachtronic Games for 2013. I think it was 2013. It might have been early 2014's game, uh, Ironclad Tactics, which was kind of like a collectible card game slash strategy game. A little bit like Scrolls, uh, a.k.a. not Hearthstone. More Scrolls. But um, you probably know them if you know them more for... Either Infina Minor, which was the game that is often considered as kind of like the spiritual predecessor or inspiration for Minecraft, or for uh, 2011's Space Cam, which is it, it's kind of had a slow burn and it's become widely regarded as one of the uh, best puzzle games that's maybe come out ever on PC. Certainly one of the best that's come out uh, in the past few years. And in Space Cam, what you did is you basically had you, you, you built chemical reactors. They'd give you some atoms, they'd tell you what molecules to make, and you would put them together through basically like a programming sequence. You'd build something that would build, that would automate the process of building other things. That is exactly what Infinifactory is, except with machines and components instead of chemical reactors. That might sound a little bit difficult. Allow me to describe what's going on with, um,. Training routine one here. So I've already got some solutions. I've played two hours of this. That's been enough to solve like seven puzzles. If you played Space Cam, you know that these games, at least, well, the the game from Zachtronics, Space Cam, uh, is it, it has a reputation for being a little bit brain bending. It's a difficult game, but uh, I'll explain what's going on to the best of my abilities here. By the way, unlike Space Cam, this doesn't take the kind of aesthetic of being a top down you know, blueprint kind of simulator. Instead, it, it's a building game, almost. But even though it maybe has kind of like some superficial similarities to Minecraft, this is not a survival sandbox game. It's just you build things in first person as opposed to building them from a top-down perspective. It feels exactly the same. As similar as two games this different can be, I think. Or this, this visually different, at least. Uh, there is a little bit of a story going on, like if we, we fly around a little bit here, you have like a jetpack that you can use. You can actually die, yeah, like your jetpack has nothing to push back against. I'm not sure if that's actually how propulsion works, but you can die, that doesn't really mean anything. Um, anyway, these are generators. These generate our uh, building blocks. This generates, you know, like a ring block here. This generates a regular block. This generates uh, its own kind of block. I, I don't have specific names for them. Let's call them block A, B, C. So you can see that these are where we want these blocks to actually end up going. Here's our ring block. That'll be block C. Here is, I think it's block B, yeah? And here is block A. So we've got to design a, sh a machine that'll automatically put A into the A spot, B into the B spot, and C into the C spot, rather than doing it by hand. You know, it'll save us a lot of time in the future. We do have a few extra kind of blocks right here, but just look at the bottom, you can see my quick bar, you know, we've got welder blocks, platform blocks, sensor blocks, pusher blocks. So we'll end up using some of these later, but for now we're just gonna use conveyor blocks because that's all we need for this puzzle. So, let's start building here. The goal is to not only get it done, but to get it done in the fewest number of cycles, which is just time, with the fewest number of blocks possible. So this, block B, needs to go right here. That's the easiest one in the whole world. We'll just set up a bunch of conveyors like this, just clicking and dragging like this. If we set our machine to go, and then have it go quickly, you can see, you know, the numbers on the top of the thing was going down there, and eventually we would hit 10. You gotta hit 10 of each. That'll finish this one off. Now, we got a little bit of a problem. We gotta get this over here. One way that we could do that is by uh, building conveyors out like this. We can rotate these conveyors, by the way, with Q and E if we wanted to, um, which I'm gonna have to do here. And this is uh, an easy way of getting this done. And if I start this machine and then have it fast forward, you'll see that the, those blocks are arriving uh, via a slightly, slightly more, <laughs> apologies there, circuitous route. Uh, but, but they're getting there eventually. The other way, and this is why this is a really good kind of training exercise here, the other way that we could do this is by uh, abusing some sort of verticality, which we're going to use for this third set here, and we're basically going to build like this. Now, you can't build it 
like Minecraft in the sense that, uh... And I'm assuming you're understanding what I'm doing right there. You can't build it like Minecraft and then just delete those platforms, because then gravity will affect it. But, as long as you have one platform, the center of gravity doesn't really matter. Like, even though this looks like something that, like, these blocks would just fall or tilt or something like that, they'll maintain their rigidity because of these two platforms right here. So let's start this one, and then you can see that this will actually get all of the um, the blocks where they need to go. This is a, this, as simple as puzzles get in uh, Infinite Factory, and it's still satisfying even when they're this simple. Even this one took me like a minute to figure out, and it might seem like that's ridiculous. You know, you should know going into this that I'm terrible at puzzle games, by the way. But uh, there you go. Hey, th that's way better than I was doing before. I actually ended up tying... Uh, the one friend on my friends list who has this game in terms of the number of cycles it took us. Previously, it took me 69. Um, which, ha ha. Uh, but uh, our footprint was a little bit worse, but that's okay. We're going to continue back to our cell here, and we'll try doing some different puzzles here. I'm going to do all the puzzles that we've already done, because I don't trust myself to do some of the ones that we haven't. I think we get uh, some new blocks here. Yeah, so they introduce new blocks as time goes on. You can see the block list. This is all the stuff that I've got unlocked right now. Uh, platforms are just building blocks, basically. They just take up a space and allow you to build on top of them or to the side of them. Conveyors move things. Welders are what we're going to be using here, and they kind of tutorialize it a little bit. Welders allow you to weld two or three blocks together. You might be able to do more. I haven't had a situation where I've had to do more than three yet, and it scares the shit out of me because it's already brain-bending enough. And you can set up the welders in a few different kind of permutations, you know? Configurations, I guess. If you have them stacked on top of one another, it'll weld them vertically. If you have them stacked up uh, beside one another, it'll weld them horizontally. And if you have them kind of touching like this, then they'll weld whatever passes through the beam. We also have sensors and pushers. We'll talk about those as we get into the second section. So this is our, our first basic, um, you know, two-block puzzle here. So we've got to get these two blocks welded together. You can't just have them arrive at the same time. They've got to be welded. So this is, like, black block. That's got to be on the left. This is, I don't know, regular block. It's got to be on the right. So, I actually, I like to build these in reverse, sort of. So, I think what we'll do is we'll uh, have a conveyor belt set up like this. Now, we don't have to have a conveyor belt on the other side. One conveyor belt will be enough to actually push these all through, which might lower our footprint a little bit. I'm still not totally sure uh, how that works. And then, we want to make sure that we have, like, this built out, uh, maybe like this instead to save one extra, excuse me, just like left click to place, right click to delete, it's very easy, uh, and we'll have this block come out like this, I just want to make sure they actually line up, because sometimes that can be a little bit tricky to set up, there we go, oh, and then we'll do exactly the same thing here, have it come out, have it touch, oh, not on top, that's not necessary, have it touch the wall, Oh, I've got it completely messed up there. There we go. There we go. Just that they actually came in. And then they'll push down this way. And that... Uh, yeah, we'll still need some of these. Let's get rid of this, though. No, we need this one. Okay, it might seem confusing right now. That's okay. Rotate this one. All right, now what I need to do is set up a welder. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to put a regular block here a regular block here, a platform block, and then I'm gonna weld like this. Might not be the most efficient way, but basically by creating that beam, any two blocks that come through here will be welded together. Which means that they'll they'll be conjoined, basically. So let's set this up and see if this actually works. I think that's the fewest number of blocks I could conceivably see myself ending up having to use here, but maybe we'll get some more blocks later that will work out for us here. All right, so this, this is totally working. This is a very easy puzzle as well, but I promise that things are gonna get more tricky as things go on. Uh, I've played about two hours of Infinity Factory so far. I think I mentioned that. And it shouldn't come as a surprise that, you know, normally I play about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, depending on the, the style of game. Oh, that was still as good as I was doing before? I wonder how you optimize it there. Um, I like that these puzzles have, like, objective best solutions, but there's other solutions that work for them, by the way. I think that's one of the things that makes this cool. You could do have a really roundabout solution that maybe you found through your own kind of divinations, but um, there is, like, an optimal solution that I have not figured out. There it is right there. Somehow with the, it'll go faster. Maybe, I don't know, something using gravity or something like that. But anyway, let's continue back to our cell. Uh, I, I like Infinite Factory a lot. It makes me feel like an idiot, but I think this is actually one of the best puzzle games I've played in recent memory, kind of without a doubt. 
It's the best puzzle game I've played on PC since at least Mini Metro, which I still played in its early access form, but I, I ended up liking a lot more than I thought I would. Um, but this this is like a little bit more fully fe featured, a little bit more unique, and it's uh, quite an interesting game that I think a lot of people are going to enjoy. If you like Factorio, I think you're going to enjoy this. If you like Space Chem, you're going to like Infinifactory. It's basically the same thing. So these, th I mean, we're doing the tutorials basically right now, and it's still got some room for kind of being unique. Now, there is a little bit of a story that goes on here. You know, we're, we're kind of, it's, it's very portly, let's put it that way. We're in some kind of test chamber type situation. We're in a cell, we're in prison, and we're having to do these puzzles to, I don't know, fight back against some alien overlords in some kind of Ender's Game type situation. Anyway, uh, you, you can click on these guys and you'll hear their failure logs, and they'll, they'll explain a little bit of what's going on, but I'm not going to do that right now. Not necessarily to avoid spoilers, but because I haven't necessarily been following it myself. This is the first time we have to make a triple block. Ooh, baby. A triple. Now, you'll notice with uh, welders, I believe you actually can just make a triple welder. Yeah. Now, what you want to be careful about with a triple welder is that it doesn't just weld all blocks together. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, wait, how did I do that again? So, you know, you want something like this set up. And then you want... Uh, like a triple welder to happen. Let's put it right, uh, let's put it as far deep as it can go actually here. Mm. Okay, let's try it here. So we'll set up like a triple welder. What we want to avoid though, because if we, if we just set this up like now, basically this is just gonna, it's gonna append a block onto the string every time. And then I don't think it's ever gonna actually stop at three blocks. And that's where things become very difficult here. Oh, this just didn't weld anything at all because they were coming. The, the, they come two blocks apart, right? So that makes sense. So, I mean, as it's hinted at in this screen right here, you kind of have to set this up in such a way that there's like uh, this here. And then that will push them. And maybe this will just work out for us. But I think this might create just a string of, of blocks. Oh, no, it actually pushes them through just fine. All right. So this is probably like the ideal way to actually do this puzzle. It's got to be close to the ideal way, in any, ca in any case, we can speed it up here because we know this one's going to finish. Um, I promise that the puzzles will get a little bit more difficult. Oh, actually, I did improve on my performance a little bit there. Uh, the puzzles will get a little bit more, more difficult and more interesting as time goes on. Was that training route four? No, that was three. All right, let's do four here. And uh, we'll create the new solution. This one has a little verticality associated with it. And we have to stack them up. Basically, this one is its exactly the same thing, except we have to do a vertical welding instead of a uh, horizontal welding. So I think we're just going to need to set up a conveyor belt. Ah, uh, maybe we... Do we need to... So if the conveyor belt comes up... Let me think about this for a second. If I just put conveyor belts, here's what my assumption is. Because of, you know, the fact that it's going to take longer for the for the blocks on top. Oh, I botched that miserably. It's going to take longer for the um, blocks on top to fall. Yeah, we're just going to end up with this weird horizontal type situation here, which is not what we want. So we need to have this kind of like stop here. And then weld and then move onwards. But how is that going to work? They're just gonna, yeah, they're gonna stack up on top of each one, each, one another like that. So I think what we need to do, I'm, I'm having such a brain fart here. I think this is the kind of game where if you talk about it and you play it at the same time, you're in for a rough time. But you can probably also at the same time see why I had such a difficulty with the game because I am uh, not very good at it. And uh, not very good at puzzles to begin with, but I did solve this, so it couldn't have been too bad. And you, kind of what I really like about the tutorials is that they, they present to you almost like a modular solution. So we learned how to, like, you don't just complete a level, you learn a skill. So in the last level, we learned how to make a triple welder. That's gonna come in handy. In this level, we're gonna learn how to make a vertical welder. That's gonna come in handy. We're gonna have to mix and match those solutions to solve more complex puzzles as time goes on. Uh, and we'll get more blocks as well, that'll make it tricky too. Uh, it's really kind of an ingenious puzzle game. And the fact that it's in early access, I've seen a lot of people be like, oh, I'll check that out when it leaves early access. Honestly, it, it seems so fully featured right now, and I, I, I always, you know, advise being a cautious buyer. 
it seems like this already has more than enough for me to suggest pulling the trigger if you uh, if you like what you see. I believe that it's it's fully featured. Maybe there's more levels to come. Apart from that, like mechanically, it's already so strong, and and the puzzles are beguiling. You can see how many, uh, like, let's just go back to our cell temporarily here, which is going to annoy some people, but you can see how much room there is, or how many spaces there are here uh, for different worlds. Each one of these contains, you know, a handful of puzzles. The puzzles are not like, doop 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 done, doop 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 done. Even the easy puzzles are difficult, uh, for me at least, except for the, the very, very earliest ones. Anyway, um, I'm not trying to suggest necessarily this is a must-buy purchase. But if you like what you see, I don't think there's a lot that should be holding you back. You know, a lot of people don't buy early access stuff on principle. That's admirable. But at the same time, uh, you know, I think this sort of proves that there's an exception to every rule, you know? Why not handle it on a case-by-case -case basis? So, my thinking here is, um, we'll try something a little weird. So this should drop the blocks in a vertical stack. Okay, the timing there actually does work out appropriately let's get down here and we'll set up a uh, vertical block sorry a vertical welder the way a vertical welder I think should work is like this by the way if you're wondering what this other welder is basically it's a, a different kind of welder that we can set up uh, vertically like that so you, I mean we could do a horizontal or a vertical one that way the same way we can do a horizontal or a vertical one this way I just prefer to use these ones that are a little easier to conceptualize for me so as these fall down, they should weld vertically. And the timing just works out. Because these are going to get pushed off. Let's have this go like this. So th this should actually complete itself now. And there is nothing more beautiful in Infinite Factory than seeing a good idea come together. Especially if it comes together via logic as opposed to just like creative timing. Actually, like, designing a system in your head and then seeing it come into action, you're like, wow, that's really cool. Like, the, there's a lot of times where I've, I've used trial and error to kind of, like, optimize a solution to get it to the point where it actually works. And then there's sometimes where you just look at something and you go, hey, I bet this is how we do it. And then you do it and with a little tinkering you come up with it. And it's, it's extremely satisfying, especially when you get into, like, the logic-based stuff. Almost like, like using redstone in something like Minecraft, which admittedly I don't have very much experience with. I have decent experience with Minecraft, not very much experience with redstone. But, you know, it, it's got the same kind of setup. Uh, where you have kind of like logic circuits set up. Literal logic circuits with wires. Or, you know, uh, what do they call them? Conduits, I think. Yeah, conduits. Uh, it, it gets really interesting. It almost feels like computer programming, but in a physical form. Which is, it's a very interesting way to do things. So this is the final puzzle for the first section of the game. And I'll show up a few more. I'll totally spoil it. Why the hell not, right? Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. But anyway, um, we have uh, this block here, this block here, this block here. We gotta set it up in a, like, a trinomino. With uh, a black block on top and a black block on the right. If this was an Xbox 360 controller, we gotta get the YB button here, okay. The Y and B button, I should say. So this one is in the middle. So this one can pretty much just go straight down, I think. Let's set this up. But, it, I mean, let's set it up to, like, here. We're gonna need, like, a tri-welder at some point. Let me take a quick look and see if a welder can be set up, because I've forgotten already, if it can be set up in the fashion that I'm thinking here. So we'll need, like, one facing this way, one this way, and then one this way. So that's how we're... Oh, no, 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 it's gotta be one block back, which I think should still work. Yeah, so that's gonna be what we're gonna have our, our blocks actually move through. And that actually is gonna solve the puzzle like by itself right there, I think. So, the the best way to do this is... Ah, whatever. I'm not gonna worry about optimizing this solution. I'm just gonna worry about actually getting it done. So we wanna weld it like... Oh, this... This, that's gonna push these two blocks together. And then we need one on this side as well, which will be like that. Okay. Then we need a conveyor belt that comes back this way. And that is going to push this block into the middle. And then we need a conveyor belt that comes this way. Actually, you know what? We can be a little creative here. Let's try. It might take a little longer, but it'll look cool. And that's the most important thing. Oh no, wait, never mind. Now that I think about it, we're gonna have to start it in a different way. Okay. 
Let's start this one up a little bit. So we'll build like a two platform high area like that. And then we'll build our conveyor belt outwards. Is this where we want it to drop? I think we want it to drop one space further, yeah. So we'll, we'll use some verticality here. And then that'll actually drop this, like right here. Now what I'm worried about is that the timing is going to be bunged up and this, the second version of this block is going to, oh yeah, 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 okay. The second version of that block is going to hit way too early for our other blocks. Now there is a way we could probably make this work with sensors, oh, I, okay, again. It helps if you just actually get the, oh, if you actually get the conveyor belts placed in the proper order here. Let's speed it up a little bit. So I worry that, yeah, we're going to have too many of these blocks creating the, the wrong kind of welding here. So we don't want to have that happen. How can we do something about that? Well, the easiest way is probably just to make this welder a little further out and make this go through. Like, one of the ways that we could do it in kind of a really weird way is, is count it and be like, okay, how long does it take... Um, how long does it take this one to get here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And then it falls down there. We could make this be like fifteen long, like one, two, three. Oh, that's the wrong way to do it. One, two, three, four, five. And then rotate, and then like. And this might not be perfect, but it probably doesn't have to be perfect in order to work. Oh, now I've done it because I've got it going off on the wrong order here. Anyway, this is this is a pretty good example of what I'm trying to say is just like probably what not to do. Oh, but no, now we're, we've welded like a five block together. Hmm. Anyway, let's reset our whole solution here. Um, but it's something that maybe could work if you timed it appropriately. Another thing that we could probably do is just have have sensors working here. But um, I'm starting to think that maybe this is one that I actually won't be able to solve here in a timely fashion. And yet still, you know, have the, the video show what's going on in the game. So you know what? Maybe we'll leave this, this tri-welder solution for later. I've done it once. I wish I could remember it. Uh, let's try to do... Oh, I did terribly on that one. How about that? I did terribly on that one as well. Um, let's let's do munitions refill type 2 here and this is kind of like a, a very basic preview of how to use conduits and sensors and this will probably be the last puzzle that I cover here because it's getting a little bit too complex for me to remember my solutions and it you know it is the kind of game where it's not just like you know you do it once and it's good you 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 really need to understand what's going on. Oh this one is not even like <laughs> I don't want to say it's not worth doing but it, it's the very most basic of basic tutorials. So let's get a conveyor belt set up here. And basically, this is teaching us how to use conduits and, and sensors. But maybe that's good that it's it's a very basic tutorialization because it'll teach me, or it'll it'll allow me to, to demonstrate how these new block types work. So now we're going to be using sensors, pushers, and conduits. So basically, what a sensor shows, or what a sensor indicates, is that an action will be taken by another block whenever the sensor is covered. So if a block comes through here, like this, no action, no action, no action, action. As soon as a block covers the sensor, whatever the um, sensor is tied to in a logic circuit will fire. So we actually want to do things in a different way here. Um, let's make this... Excuse me? Oh, I can't delete that block, right. Um, let's make that a pusher, which is, you know, basically like the verb of this whole situation and uh, then we will make our sensor here actually let, let's make our sensor here just to demonstrate how you would build a conduit I think it makes more sense to have it right next to it but it doesn't really matter so we'll have our sensor pointed here whenever the sensor gets covered the pusher will fire only it won't yet because we need to actually draw the conduit between them now whenever the sensor is covered the pusher will push and that'll push blocks onto this conveyor belt that will take them through to the end here so let's get this started here the pusher, you know, it can be used also as a blocker, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. So that's a very easy uh, puzzle here that demonstrates how to use those. I actually improved on my solution by one cycle, which is hilarious, but I, I made it worse by uh, one 
footprint, which is also kind of hilarious. So let's do, we'll try to do munitions refill type 6, which as you can see I did terribly on. It took me 182 cycles, but this is where things get trickier. I remember this puzzle very well. I don't remember the solution very well, but I remember the kind. So this one, it might seem so easy. I don't, uh, by the way, the, the direction of the blocks, like the rotation, doesn't matter if they're single blocks, as far as I know, anyway. Uh, if, if it's like a configuration, I think it does matter. Anyway, single block comes out of here. We gotta split it into three different blocks. The way that I think we do this, there's no welding involved here. The way that we, I think we do this is basically we have like a default path for the blocks to take. So let's make the far right path here the default path. We'll have, oh, I, the, the direction that which you click and drag is kind of like an easy shortcut for, um, uh, for the direction of the conveyor belt. So if you drag like this way to this way, that's the way the conveyor belts will move. But you can also manually rotate them, which is sometimes more handy. Is this, I think we gotta be one more over, so we want like this, and then this, and then this. Alright, so this is gonna be our default path. Basically, blocks will come through here, they'll move on to the right section. Easy enough. Now, the tricky part, This is that was the very, very easy part. The tricky part of this is how we, with logic, actually make the game Push some block, like if there's too many blocks here, push a block over here. If there's too many blocks here, push a block over here. So I think one way that we can do this is we can have, um, you don't really want to have, a, you might say this is easy, okay? You might say, hey, we'll put a sensor here. Uh, well, got to do it this way. We'll put a sensor here, and then we'll put a pusher here. Uh, well, actually, that wouldn't make any sense at all. We'll put, like, a sensor there and a pusher here. Like that. And then we'll have conveyor belts that go this way. So that, the way that this would work, you would think... Uh, we've got to set them up, like, logically here. You can build conduits vertically, which is, you know, absolutely essential to actually complete puzzles in the game. Um, so we'll just build this, like, piping up here. All right, so you might be saying, here's how this puzzle is going to work. When uh, a block comes down, it'll cover the sensor. This sensor being covered will push onto this area, which we still need to optimize. And um, then whenever there's like an overflow in this direction, it'll push blocks in that direction. This is a solution that I think will work if you give it enough time, but I think it's a, a, a suboptimal solution. I think it's, uh, it's going to take way too many cycles, but it might get the job done. Actually, you know what? Yeah, yeah, there we go. It will get the job done, at least for the second set. Um, but it, it'll it'll take a while to do so, you know? It's it's suboptimal. We're going to be completing a lot of, of cycles unnecessarily and dumping way too many end products in our far right reactor. Which, well, that's some space camp talking. But honestly, that's not so bad. Uh, I'm trying to think of how this will work. Yeah, this might be the solution that I end up rolling with, actually. It might even be better than the solution I used before. Uh, and then, you know, all you would do, obviously, if you wanted to repeat this, is you would put a sensor, like, right here, and then a pusher right here. And uh, you would connect those logically as well. Now, it's uh, sometimes a little tricky to place blocks. One thing I haven't talked about is whether or not I prefer, like, the Space Chem style or the Infinifactory style. Uh, of actually doing the puzzles. I, you know, I, I think I prefer the Space Cam, like, top-down way of doing things. I think it's a little easier to place things accurately and visualize. But, in, in Infinifactory, you have the benefit of three-dimensional space. Plus, if you just made it, like, Space Cam, but with machines, it would just be Space Cam 2. So I appreciate that this is a little bit more interesting. So this is exactly the same uh, solution, just replicated over here. I believe that information travels instantly between the sensors and through the conduits to the pushers, by the way. Um, so, you know, most blocks will make it to the far right, and then some blocks occasionally will make it to the middle. And if there's a huge amount of blocks that make it to the middle, actually, you know what? This solution won't totally work. We'll still make, blocks will make it to the middle, but no blocks are ever going to make it to the, uh, to the outdoors here. Or not the outdoors, but the, uh, the, the far outside. So we got to rethink our solution here. So this just isn't going to work. Let's get rid of these. This is where things, you know, this is where you end up with these puzzles that take half an hour or more to solve. 
But it's the the process, like the iterative process of solving them is fun as well. So we've got a solution that sort of works. There's probably a more elegant way to make it happen with like some platform blocks or something like that. The problem is like you don't want to have a, a pusher block active at all times because then it blocks. Maybe blocking is a good yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Alright, I just had a thought. And now I'm trying to think about how to put it into action. What if we had it so that a path is blocked if the sensor's covered? So if there's a block here, like if there's a block on our far right path, then a pusher is activated that prevents blocks from falling onto the right path. Uh, I don't know. It seems doable, but also like, do, it, do I really want to do it? The other way that we could do this is just with timing. So let's let's let this go, and this is an important element. Sometimes uh, we want to see when the sensor is going to fire. This is when the pusher is going to fire on this cycle right here. So that's not going to push anything. There we go. Where would a sensor have to be in order to push this one space further? It would have to be right here. So let's try that. This might sound a little confusing. Basically, I'm going to take away this logic, and then I'm going to build it one story or two stories higher out of necessity. And this is where, you know, my game starts to become very suboptimal, but um, basically we're just creating room for us to have some room here. And then we're going to put a sensor here, and we're going to tie that sensor to this pusher that we had originally suggested would go, like, right here. By the way, I know that some of you, uh, I, yeah, we can still do this. Some of you at home probably like have the solution already. That's great, you know, you're a great fit for this kind of game. I am not a, an engineer, although I sometimes feel like one when I actually get a solution in this game. It's a, it's an overwhelming sense of satisfaction when that happens. So now my thinking is that occasionally a block will sneak through to the, the middle and then it'll usually get pushed through to the third section. Okay, but do any blocks make it through the middle section? That's the tricky part here. And if not, how can we stop this? So now we have a, a pretty good situation where like, it, it seems like basically half the blocks are making it uh, to the far left and half the blocks are making it to the far right. That's pretty cool. But now we've got to get some back to the middle. But not all of them. So let's... <laughs> this is where things get very tough. Let's find out where we can push half the blocks back one step further. To be, so This is where all of the blocks here would be pushed to this section. That's fine. As long as we can push them back. If we wanted to push half the blocks back, we could put a sensor there and a pusher right after. I don't know, let's try it, okay. I don't necessarily think this is gonna work. We might end this video without having like an actual conclusion to this puzzle, which I know would annoy people, but. So my thinking was like a sensor. Isn't that, that's gonna stop like every block. Hmm. There's, there's gotta be a much more elegant way of making this happen. Right now, we still have like a lot of blocks that are making it, th like mo more blocks are making it through on the far right. What if we just had like another pusher that came down? That was, t ah, okay, 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 one second. What if we just had another pusher tied to the same architecture of our second pusher, but it was located like here instead? We might need to move this one space further, but I think that this might actually work, but it's gotta be tied into the, the infrastructure. Which, oh, it is already, okay. Let's try this again. If this doesn't work, I might just end the video, honestly, because this could go on for years. Okay, no, no blocks are being pushed. That's a problem. They're all being stopped, but none of them are actually being pushed. Yeah, this has really augmented our system in a way that is not good. Uh, and we can't move this sensor. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to take this one back to the drawing board. I did do this one once, but you can really see where the complexity comes in. Anyway, this is uh, this is Infinifactory. I recommend it.
Honestly, I've been enjoying myself a lot with it. I plan on coming back. Uh, and, you know, it's a game that definitely benefits from some quiet play, I think, as opposed to trying to talk over it at all times. It's got a little narrative, you know, kind of looping around it as well. Might be more significant than I've noticed thus far. But really, this is a game that I love for its mechanics as opposed to its... Uh, uh, as opposed to anything else going on, you know, interstitial or extraneous. In any case, it's available on Steam. Uh, I believe it's 15 US dollars. It's like 16 something Canadian. Uh, this is a review copy, so, you know, I obviously can't be trusted. But in any case, uh, thanks for watching. If you're interested in picking up Infinifactory, in spite of the fact that it's in early access, again, you know, caveat emptor always, you know, buyer beware when it comes to early access stuff, but this. It seems really fully featured for uh, an early access release, and it, the mechanic stuff that makes it great is already there. Um, but, you know, if you if you avoid buying early access stuff on principle, so be it. You know, it, it'll still be there when it comes out of early access, but uh, in any case, there'll be a link to pick up Infinite Factory on Steam in the video description below. And of course, if you enjoyed the episode, show your support, click the like button, it helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more first impressions in the future. As for watching, as for now, thanks for watching, my brain is scrambled. And I'll see you next time.